As designers, you know, you kind of um, appreciate the history of design and history of creativity. And we thought, and, and also as people who like going out, we've been to lots of festivals. And um, almost a decade ago now, we, we just got talking about, we were a bit bored with the existing festival scene. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if there was a festival that celebrated the history of design, the history of music, the history of car design and, and, uh, and film and, and, and just put it all together with great food and dancing and, uh, and just have something that was, you know, not all about listening to bands on a stage, but just about the people themselves and people getting dressed up. And we, you know, I've got a great appreciation, the whole family has, of soul music, of funk, of rock and roll, of all sorts of 60s easy listening, and all these collections of music. We thought, well, well, why don't we do something that celebrates everything from the 1920s to the 1990s and looks at it, you know, almost forensically, but with fun. And to make it so that it wasn't just your standard festival crowd, that it was everybody, so that young people could get together with your mum, your nan, and all the generations could talk about their, because everybody's been interested in music and fashion and things throughout the ages. And if you can bring it all together, and it worked. It just the first one we did was in on the Sussex Downs in 2010, and there was just three generations of families come in and people bringing their cars and bringing their records and getting dressed up and, and um, you know and the whole idea of it was not about to create some kind of festival brand that made a lot of money it was it was about creating something that was just as cheap as possible and, and with you know a lot of the, a lot of our events are, have the majority of the stuff free uh, and just to make something that that was a public celebration and we could have fun at it as well as, as designers and give something back and then go back to our day jobs on a Monday. I think bring, bringing a festival like this to a place like Morecambe, which was a place full of celebration and full of life. The reason that I brought this to Morecambe is because I was born here and lived here till I was seven. And I remember the promenade and, and, and the piers and the beach just full of life. And, my mum, and the pictures of my mum and my nan and all the dance clubs and the, the, the fun that they had. And, and, and towns like Morecambe now, they've obviously because of the change in people's habits in terms of holidays and the way that the world has changed and, and all sorts of political decisions that have been made over the decades have led to them being a pale imitation of what they, of what they once were. But they've still got that intrinsic beauty of, of, uh, of, of the seaside, of the, of the big sky, uh, of some amazing architecture and promenades of course and, and, that, and that lovely sea air. And, we, and, and to be able to bring that celebration back means a lot to the people who remember it as it was, but also bring in people and think, what well, can it be like this? Can, it, can more can be like this? And hopefully it will inspire a, a young generation to come back, to open a cafe here and there, to, you know, to maybe bring their family here. And, and, and so people keep telling us that it's great for more and, you know, and that's the main thing that we want it to be. Yeah, well, we've, been, we've, been told, we've been told that, um, that this is the busiest in terms of bed occupancy that Morecambe's had in, in living memory. We were at, I think, 90 odd percent with two days to go, so probably every single bed space has gone, which is great. Um, we haven't got the full figures yet, but we were told on the first day we had about 10,000 people, and people are expecting double that today. I think well, maybe that's ambitious, but if we're getting those kind of numbers, which then starts to be around, not much different to the population of the town, then obviously a lot of those people are incomers and they're coming for the first time. We've been told, you know, some moaning about, but we can't do anything about that, how it's like a roadblock trying to get in from the motorway through Lancaster into Morecambe. And, uh, and people can't wait for the new bypass when people are saying, oh, it's, you've blocked the roads, you know, well, great, we've blocked the roads, that's, that's what you need, you know, we need people to come into Morecambe. It, I think when people get here, they'll realise it was worth that hour's wait in the car and we, we've done our job. I mean, there's so many bits that, that we enjoy, you know, and the main, the main thing is seeing people smile, and you see, you, you see people's smiling faces. The, the, um, the vintage bike ride yesterday, when you see all these people, some of them dressed up in, in vintage clothes, other ones just bringing their cherished 60s and 50s bikes, and, and seeing the love that was in that, and then seeing them all cycle down the prom for an hour and back, great. I mean, I'm just wait, I can't wait today for the pooch parade. The amount of people who've got dressed up and are dressing their dogs up to match, just brilliant. Yeah, the marketplace, seeing all, all these traders making money, you know, when you've got thousands of people going past you making money, all the food, the great food, we've got a brilliant selection of food here and bars, the, the double-decker bus, the Routemaster bus with the DJs on top and the, and, and, and the bar on the level and, and all the people who've just gathered around that for the whole day and stayed there and then impromptu dancing that starts, the dance lessons, seeing the Midland Hotel booked out and, and, all, and all of the great things that are, that are going on here. 
The car, the classic car show is just, just fantastic. Wherever you look, there's stuff going on. And then in the evenings, you know, all the nightclubs start. And, you know, we had 500 people in the wonderful Winter Gardens last night at, at, the, at the warehouse with all the Hacienda DJs and seeing, you know, just, just people just dancing with abandon. And tonight, Soul Casino and Let It Rock, it's great. You know, just, there's just so, the main thing is that people are having a good time. And then you get this weather on top of that. You know, the, these things work anyway because British are great at, at, at dealing with weather. But when it's like this, we, we really do celebrate. Uh, well, we've been doing these festivals now. This is about our 12th. Um, and we've been doing them for a while. And, you know, we don't know where it's, we didn't plan it. Was, at the first, it was just something we did kind of on a whim. We've been talking about it for a few years and we thought we'd give it a go and it's worked. Um, we're not going to give up our day jobs as designers to do it. And we'll, we'll fit it in when we feel we've got the energy. Uh, and, when, and when there's a town that wants us to do it, you know, and, and if, you know, because the great thing about Morecambe here is that the, the council have got behind it, Lancaster Council, Morecambe Council, and the volunteers, you know, without the volunteer team, you wouldn't do it. Now, you know, we, we can't put it on just a group, of, a group of designers, most of us based in London, and then coming to a town and delivering it. The town's got to, got to do the most of it, and we can, we can uh, curate it, we can guide it from above, you know, without the, our two, production people, Eleanor and Lauren, and their, and their, um, their company, Deco Public, which is based here in Morecambe. Without that, it wouldn't be happening. It's, you know, we need all the local talent as well. I think festivals like this that bring out the generations together can play a big role in regeneration, without, without a doubt. Um, and, and also, the process of people coming together and putting this on, and, and the, and the, because it is about the community coming together and put, putting it on, I think it's quite powerful regeneration because people power is the strongest form of regeneration you can get. Central government money, you know, it helps, but this, this is where it really happens.